Hey guys, welcome to what I'm calling happy hour and horsepower. So let's talk turbos. Cheers. Today we're going to talk turbos, or more specifically, ring gap for turbos. One of the most common questions I get is, hey, what ring gap should I run? Or do I have to run ring gap? Some variation of that. How much ring gap can I get away with? Do I have to take it apart? All of that stuff. And despite the fact that I've run <laughs> a number of videos and a number of posts on Facebook and Instagram, and lots of other guys have done it too, that have done lots and lots of turbo testing, we always tell them what ring gap to run. I constantly get this question. So I decided, hey, let's go ahead and make a video and talk about ring gap. Not just about what ring gap you should use, but what ring gap is, why there's ring gap in the first place, how much you should use, should you use ring gap, should you increase it, should you not do it, can you run it without it, all of that stuff. So let's get going. First of all, what is ring gap? Well, if you take a look at piston rings from any manufacturer for any motor, whether it's an LS, big block Chevy, small block Chevy, modular Ford, whatever it is, any motor has ring gap in it. And the reason that they have that is, if you take a look at a ring in a bore, you'll see that the ends of the ring don't touch, like in the photo. So the rings don't touch for a good reason. The reason that they don't touch is because piston rings, like the rest of the motor, operate over a wide variety of different temperatures. So when you increase the temperature with those rings, they grow, and when they grow, the gap gets closer and closer together as those rings, as they grow, if they get to the point where they touch, then bad things happen. That's why people break pistons. A lot of people think that when they run a motor under boost and it breaks a ring land, they think, oh, that's a weak piston. The reality is the piston has nothing to do with it. It's all the ring. So what happens is if that ring gets too hot and all the ring gap goes away and the rings touch and butt together, what will happen is when the piston's going up and down, they will momentarily seize that piston in the bore. They'll want to stop it. And when they do that, when the ring seizes momentarily in the bore, it snaps the ring land off, usually in between the first and the second ring land. It can snap the top off. It can do all sorts of things. But that's what will happen. It's not a weak piston. It's because there was no more ring gap, which is why on a turbo application or a nitrous application, any sort of boosted application or high horsepower deal, we add ring gap. The reason why is because there's more temperature in those instances. So we add ring gap because there's more temperature. The more temperature there is, the more heat you're going to put in the rings, the more they're going to grow, the closer they're going to get together, and the more chance of that happening, of those bad things happening. So that's why we run ring gap. That's why the factory ring has ring gap in it. And that's why we increase it when we run boost, because we're trying to give room for that pist for the ring gap, for the um, piston ring to grow and not touch. Above all, <laughs> you do not want those rings butting together and snapping the piston, hurting piston. We've all seen that. Lots of LS guys, but everybody, big block Chevy guys, small block Chevy guys, modular Ford, we've all done it. Trust me, I've done it on lots and lots of motors because we've run lots of motors. We didn't want to go to the trouble of taking the motor apart because you know it takes so long to do that. <laughs> it, it really doesn't. But we, it takes so long to do that that we don't want to take it apart and take the rings out, file the rings, put them back in, put it all back together, and then try to run it. Despite the fact that that's actually the right way to do it. So now let's talk about that. There are a lot of guys, especially in the LS world, and, and obviously I'm one of them, that advocate going to the wrecking yard, getting a motor, bringing it back to the dyno or putting it in a car, and adding a cam springs and boost to it, and away you go. And that works very well. Here's the problem with that. And this is why I always like to, to take the motor apart and increase the ring gap. The question there is, hey, can I get away with not taking it apart and, and increasing the ring gap? Yes, absolutely. There are lots of guys out there, and when I use the term lots, I don't know what that number is. I don't know what percentage it is. I don't know what number it is. But there are guys out there that take these motors from the wrecking yard, <laughs> leave them the way that they are, change the cam springs and boost, maybe put new oil in it or something, and go out and run it in, it works. As long as it's tuned well, it works. The flip side of that is there are also guys that go out there and try this and blow the motor up. So if we discount the number of people that 
shouldn't be tuning it or don't know how to tune it or had it tuned incorrectly that hurt it because there was too much timing or not enough fuel or those kinds of things where it was actually just a ring gap problem we still have some of some on both sides of that camp we have somewhere it worked and we have somewhere it doesn't I, and i know because I've, I've been on both sides of that and the reason that that happens is because there's not a universal thing everybody can't go down and grab a motor from the wrecking yard and add a ton of boost to it and have it work out it also means that every time you go and run one that you don't have to do ring gap because sometimes it does work out <laughs> and that's why we have this that's why we have this battle between these two camps lots of guys go out and do it and they had success here's my personal feeling and this is this is just me the way that I feel about it the way that I would do it I'm not telling you it's absolute because nothing that I tell you on this channel will ever be absolute I will never tell you you have to run this cam because this is the best cam I'm not one of those guys there's lots and lots of guys on the internet that'll tell you whatever thing that they're selling like you have to run this turbo or you have to run this camshaft I'm not that guy what I'm going to tell you on my channel is when I ran this cam or this turbo here's what it did you get to choose if you like that or you don't like that I don't care it doesn't make any difference to me I don't sell anything I don't offer anything I'm not I'm not one of the manufacturers I don't care about any of that when I run a dyno test one thing is A and one thing is B when I compared A to B here's what happened you guys get to choose what you want to do so with the ring gap situation here's why I like to gap rings when I put a and, and, and doing it on the dyno is much easier because I can take it apart and, and put everything back together and, and really fast it's easy to work on I don't have to lean over any fenders I don't have to do any of that but here's why I like to do it if I'm putting a motor in a car I only want to do it once it's a lot of work to put especially like just dropping a motor in a car takes no time at all I mean setting it in there is actually fairly easy but then getting everything and, and guys that do this should know exactly what I'm talking about then getting everything hooked up getting all the exhaust hooked up getting all the air intakes hooked up getting the intercoolers the tubing the the wiring all the 10,000 different hoses and vacuum lines and stuff that you have to put in there all of that stuff takes a lot of time to actually get it up and running so that you could take it to the dyno or go make passes or street tune it or whatever you're going to do that takes a lot of time and it also takes a lot of time yeah, not a lot of time but you want that motor to be in there for a long time so if you're gonna if you plan on putting this motor in your car and going out and running at the drag strip and making passes all season or for two seasons or ten seasons or whatever it is in my mind what I want to do is I want the thing to be right I don't even like putting a motor in like if I got a crate motor from somebody from Sh Chevrolet or GM performance or Ford racing or whoever it is even if they're the most reputable company in the world and they're the best engine builder in the world if I got a motor from somebody I would run it on the dyno before I put it in the car because I want to put it in the car and I want it to be the last time I do that I want it to be right which is why I'm a big advocate of ring gap my problem with ring gap is I've run some from the dyno where we didn't change the ring gap I've run 300 shots of nitrous from a motor that we just brought over from the wrecking yard this one we didn't care about and that we expected to break we, we fully expected the thing to blow up but it didn't which means that on that one the ring gap the factory ring gap was enough and here's the problem with that it's a little bit of a Russian roulette deal it's a little bit of a roll of the dice when you get a motor from the wrecking yard you have no idea what the ring gap is okay there's no universal number that every 5.3 or 4.8 or 6.0 that you take apart will have the same ring gap from the wrecking yard it's just not, I mean I've measured a bunch of different ones they vary by five or six thousands and five or six thousands can be the difference between the thing working and it not working and blowing up and not blowing up and here's the other problem and here's one of the things that, that I get a lot of and we all know that this is true because we're all guilty of it hey can I just go get a motor from the wrecking yard and put it in and run it and without changing the ring gap I'm only gonna run seven pounds <laughs> now I wish I had a nickel for every time I heard I'm only gonna run seven pounds because that never happens <laughs> the problem is we run seven pounds and, and we and we promise to be good <laughs> and we only want to run low boost but then we never do if seven pounds is good if I just turn it up a little bit it's gonna be really good and it is when you go from seven pounds to ten pounds man the thing's awesome it feels so much better but you know be really good after running it at seven pounds or ten pounds is like 12 pounds 12 pounds is not going to hurt anything right <laughs> and then 15 and then 20 and that's the problem we never do what we're saying we're going to do because boost is so addicting 
So your seven pound thing became 10 and 12 and 15, and then you blew it up. And if you did ring gap on it, if you increased the ring gap, that probably wouldn't happen unless the tune was wrong. But it wouldn't happen from the rings touching. You could eliminate that as a possibility if you increase the ring gap. And like I said, I want to do it just because I want to put the motor in and be done with it. One time, one and done. <laughs> That's my motto. So the other problem is that, and the question I get asked all the time is, regarding ring gap is, hey, how much boost can I run without changing the ring gap? Well. That's because over these vast years when people have been doing this, they equate, okay, it's safe at seven pounds, it's safe at 10 pounds, it's safe at 12 pounds, whatever the number is. The reality is there's no direct correlation there. Let me give you an example. On my personal five liter Mustang, when I ran at the Silver State, I ran, it was rounding at seven, seven and a half pounds of boost with no intercooler on it. It was a cold day out and had a good cold air intake on it. But I ran seven pounds on that thing, seven and a half pounds, excuse me, for 32 minutes, wide open throttle. So the, the reason that the rings expand is not because of boost. There's not a boost ring gap equivalent. It's ring temperature. And the problem is boost isn't the only thing that affects ring temperature. Ring temperature can be affected by a number of things. It can be affected by the fuel that you're using, certainly the timing, um, the charge air, like if you run seven pounds with no intercooler versus having an intercooler or the fuel you use, if you run E85, it's obviously gonna be cooler. Um, but one of the things that affects it is the amount of time under load. Like if you're running seven pounds, that's fine. And you, or even 10 pounds, let's say, and you rip through the gears and it's, you, you're at wide open throttle for maybe nine or 10 seconds. A lot of guys can get away with that. But what if you're roll racing on the freeway? and all of a sudden you're on the gas for 15, 20, 30, 40 seconds, however long you have, then the window gets narrower and narrower, and then you blow something up. That's the problem with ring gap, is that we, we tend, to increase the, tend to increase the boost anyway, and even if we don't, it's not just, oh yeah, 10 pounds is okay, this guy ran 10 pounds. Yeah, but he's only running 10 pounds, rolling through two or three gears at a time, you know, showing, showing off on the street. He wasn't in it for a long period of time. And if you're in it for a long period of time, if you're towing with it, you know, a lot of guys now want to tow with small turbos and stuff, and that works very well. But again, if you're at under load, under boost for a long time, even low boost can put enough temperature in the ring gap to cause the rings to close and break something. That's why I like putting a ring gap in. So what I want you guys to do is make sure to comment and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any more questions about ring gap and about turbos and about camshafts. I'm gonna keep doing this stuff. And again, this applies not just to LS motors, but to everything. One of the rules of thumb that guys can use is, the question always is, how much ring gap should I run when I run my LS motor? Well, I normally run between 28 and 30. And for me, people ask, well, is that the top ring or the second ring or which one is it? Is it 28 or 30? Me, it doesn't matter. That's a no-go, go thing. When I first started doing the Big Bang motors, I had 35 thousandths in some of those. So the big concern there is, hey, what about a blow-by? In my opinion, what I've seen on the dyno is even when we increased it to 30 thousandths, blow-by didn't go up appreciably. As a matter of fact, there was more of an instance in blow-by with less ring gap and, and, and loose rings, you know, old tired rings, than there was with rings that were seated that had extra ring gap. So I haven't seen the ring gap change things dramatically. Now, obviously a direct back-to-back -back test would be the best way to figure that out and we could measure that. But if you add ring gap, um, running under boost actually kind of helps seal the thing up. So I wouldn't worry about that. The ring gap deal is not, it's not gonna be, a, there's not gonna be a blow by issue. We always vent our, our, our crankcase system to atmosphere anyways. We don't dr ever draw that stuff in. And we obviously don't pressurize that by having it hooked up under boost because that's not a good idea. So I wouldn't worry about the ring gap thing in terms of, uh, in terms of blow by because that doesn't seem to be an issue. If there's not blow by before you added the ring gap, there probably won't be blow by after. And trust me, we've run rings like on these big bang motors that had 250,000 miles on them. That's right, all we did was take the ring out and clean all the gunk off of it, put ring gap in and put it back in. That's something that has a quarter of a million miles on it. And it still ran great. And we still made a, a ton of power. I mean, some of these we made over 1500 horsepower. So obviously the factory rings are good. They work well, put enough ring gap in it. Guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Come on, help me out. All that like, share, subscribe stuff, it's right down here. It's right at the bottom, right at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching, guys.